live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. It's theCUBE, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the seal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante with wikibon.org. Our next guest, Ahmed Boulat, Program Director, Masters in Data Science from Istanbul Seer University. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Um, um, we had a chat on opening night here inside the social lounge. It was a great chat and uh, I got to tell you, I was fascinated. I could have not talked another hour. So we got the live streaming here. So let's try to recreate the magic. Let's do it. Um, uh, first, um, data science, obviously, you know, uh, there's a paper you wrote two years ago. Yes. That's now fashionable again. So we talked about that, but in general, the theme of big data is essentially good coding, good science, and real time. So let's talk about that analytics. What's your take of the current state of the union for data science from a practitioner standpoint, from a student perspective, research and application in business? Where are we? Are we still early? What's the cool things that are going on? Okay, so uh, John, I, I, I'm here for the BDA EdCon, which is a big data analysis and education conference. So it's the second time uh, we've been doing it. And Basically, the academicians uh, come together and discuss, uh, are we ready in data science? I mean, how, how are, the school, are the schools ready in data science? And, and I came here and I gave a talk on our uh, graduate program, and I talked about the kinds of classes that we have. So it's very early. I mean, I, we just got our first batch of students in fall 2014, so, and it's quite new. And we've been discussing, should we add in more classes, or should, is this class right? Is it going to answer the industry's needs? So we're still working, and I think we're getting there, so we're progressing. So I think we're still in the midst of discussing, is there a data scientist person specifically, or data, data science is just a concept? So one of the things that we see, and this is a good conversation to drill down on, is data science obviously hot. You're seeing people talk about, oh, I want some more data scientists. Mm -hmm. There's no yellow pages, there's no directory, give me the data science. Yeah. It's usually, they, they're growing out of the, on their own, if you will, some, through, through either computer uh -huh. science or just some weird math skill, physics, and you know, anthropology. I know That's guys right. that are really killer. Just, it's just a different breed right now. Um, so there's just not enough data science going around. So I've got to ask you, one, what are the things that are going on to automate data science? And two, what are the things that you see in software that'll make data science easier for people to apply data science skills, mm -hmm. not so much be coding Python or okay. you know, doing algorithmic machine learning code? Okay, so I think, uh, as I said, I don't believe in the, uh, the, the title data scientist, but I believe in data science uh, as a discipline. And the reason uh, is, for example, I see computer scientists playing a pivotal role in data science projects, but, I mean, uh, what, are, what about the other people? For example, computer scientists have to work with uh, domain experts, sociologists, uh, biologists, psychologists, so we have to bring them on board. If we call this computer science, no one is going to be on board. We, ha we can embrace everybody around data science because data can sort of embrace everybody and then we can just sit together with a statistician, with a biologist, with a domain expert, and a computer scientist is going to be there with specific skill set to drive it forward. So that's what I call a data, data science. So data scientist, I don't think should exist, but data science should exist. It is the, the, the table that brings all those practitioners together and they work on the project uh, hands well, on. a lot of people are saying they're data scientists, and it's actually weird because they might not even be. So, so you're making a distinction. There's data I science, do. yes, not so much a data scientist. People are calling themselves data scientists so they can get make more money. Look, I mean, that's, you, you know what? That's, 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 that's what it is. I mean, if you're yeah. a statistician yeah. and you know how to code in R, well, you're a cool data scientist. And you just got to raise. <laughs> then and, then, and then there's a false expectation because people think there's magic juju in there, right, Dave? Like, yeah, that's, it's just like that's, <laughs> that's why I'm. Uh, <laughs> well, but there's now, no standards. now in the fairness. Point. So, uh, someone like Hillary Mason mm -hmm. would say, well, a data scientist has, take your data science disciplines, okay. a data scientist w would be somebody who has those skills, okay. uh, which is, which it, is pretty rare. It's weird, uh, it's, it would be, it, it would, I mean, come on, I, I did my PhD, and it is all about specializing, it's all about you know, picking a topic, deep diving in it, so that's how you can be proficient in something. I mean, do we really expect pe one person to have data visualization, data analytics, scalable systems, 
Business intelligence, no, come on. So well, but wait now, so it might take a while to get those skills, but you could study and, and, IBM and, and, can help and you. practice. IBM can right? help you. Give you the so we'll come back to that. But, okay. but what an individual could, in theory anyway, over some period of time, say a decade, okay. study those different disciplines and okay. maybe even apply them okay. and come out with... They might change. <laughs> so we got to be agile. That's 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 what so I. So your argument would be they have to be specialized to keep up with the changes. Exactly. So they have to be agile. They have to embrace the change. It's going to change. So don't let's not expect that you know, business analytics skills is the only skill you know the top skill there. No, no, it might change. So how do you embrace it? How do you change? How do you adapt? Those are the kinds of things or social skills that are really important, I think. So we had a question in the crowd chat, but it's kind of related to you know, more of the business part, okay. but I want to apply it to our conversation more technical. Okay. The question is from Mark uh, Bullander. What are the best traits of your business partners that have helped you achieve your business outcomes? I'll translate late into the more this conversation is, it's a team sport, data science. Collaborative That's right. computing That's right. is very much what's going on in this world. So um, what traits do you see in partners, or peers, if you will, to help achieve a result? I want, Whether, yeah. I want them to be doers. Basically, I want them to be, you know, lean to the table, and I, sh I should do it too as well. But <laughs> leaning in, the leaning Sheryl in. Sandberg so said. leaning is the is the key, <laughs> I think. So that is the, because I'm going to be working with a statistician. So she or he should be, you know, willing to pitch in anytime that is needed. So I'm, I, I am the computer scientist. I need to massage the data. I should do it. So it should be a collaborative effort. So I don't, as I said, everybody should lean in. It's a project. It should be agile, and we need to just, you know, step by step. Uh, work towards the solution. That's what's the state of data science uh, and big data in in Istanbul and your part of the world. I think it is. Uh, it's this, I would say um, I see masters in data. For example, the first masters in data science program that I saw was at UC Berkeley, and this was I think two three years ago. And uh, I may be, I may be mistaken, but that's when I saw it. So in in Istanbul, it's the same. So. I think we are the first program in Istanbul or in Turkey, probably in the region, in EMEA region, who has a master's program in data science. So that's how, how ready we are. And we just opened up and we got our first students in fall 2014, so this semester. And you do that based on demand from society? Demand or, I, I mean, I, I am always, you know, I am always you know, tapping into industry. And I, am, I was here last year and I was actually, I lived in the States for 10 years, so I'm always, you know, up to date in what's happening in this industry, what are the demands, what, are, what is needed. So I'm just trying to be visionary and try to you know, move on uh, early than, earlier than my previous. Did you go to school in the States? Yes, I did. And I then got we my kicked PhD. you out? Uh, no. <laughs> no, that's what we usually do. <laughs> 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 I got my PhD at UCSB, the, you know, I think the loveliest city in, uh, in this My son goes there. Yeah, it is a, it's, it's a great place. So I great had place a, to live, he lives on the uh, IV. A lot of distractions, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of distractions. That's why it takes you know, a, a while to, to finish your PhD. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to rush. <laughs> Which is good, I mean, you can't just you know, take as much as time. So as what's you going want. on in Istanbul? So like, you, you're in a part of the country that's really exploding. You're seeing mm -hmm. a lot of the Eastern Bloc countries from a computer science standpoint, you know, do a lot of things. You also get a bad rap on the hacking side. So you also have, you know, close to the territory and there's a geopolitical scene okay. going on, you know, south of Turkey. So what's What's the environment like? You got good guys, you got bad guys. Um, are the coders up to speed? I mean, they get a bad rap sometimes by some people in America saying, oh, those guys are, are hacks. Um, what's the state of the computer science? I'm, I'm hearing mixed messages there. Uh, I think, uh, I, I saw, a, um, it, was a, it was a tweet, I think, and it was saying the, the, there are a few languages who, who's going to uh, make people, people better at mathematics, and Turkish is one of them. So you can see the, the, the computer scientists in Turkey as good in math, good in coding skills. Do they have division? The Not yet. So I just yeah. want to be honest. So we don't have division, but we do have the mathematical and analysis yeah. skills. So that is the, in a way, state. That's the DNA, that's that, built that's in. That's the DNA. So, and uh, going back to your uh, statement about, I think I am very lucky to be in Istanbul because there are problems and, there are, and they are complex. Because problems usually have many, many dimensions. It just, it's not just a mathematical problem, it's not a computer science problem. It is a problem that has socioeconomic uh, dimension, it has psychological dimension, historical dimension. So the problems that we have, it's like a melting pot in Istanbul, big problems. And I think it's a good place to be in if you're going to do data science. So, and, and you have challenging problems there. 
That's yeah, how I, mean, I see it. I mean, there's a lot of activity there. Certainly we see it, Dave. We've seen a lot of, lot of, lot of innovations coming out of that area. Um, I got to ask you about the beaches in Turkey. Because everyone <laughs> loves to talk about the beaches. You know, do, you, they they, they do a, from, 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 from Europe, you know, it's a, it's a favorite destination spot. And there's and the a, city, Istanbul itself. I mean, it's if, if you like awesome. history, it is a must. Yeah. It's a very old city. It is I, a bucket list city. Yeah, and, the, and right. the, just, people love going there, just in terms of the beaches and the ocean, it's awesome. Um, I had to get that out of the way. <laughs> okay. People want to know, I mean, how <laughs> things going? Is the Internet of Things project going on, Dave? Albert? I've not been, but I have a good yeah. friend who's, who's been and says it's a must-see. It is a must-see, I mean, it's, I mean, how long is enough? Well, it's never enough, but spare at least a week uh, to uh, sightsee, you know, to see all the historical places. And I think historical peninsula is the place you want to go. Mm. That's where the Ottoman Empire was based in. So I mean, I got I to get your perspective on the computer science back okay. to that thread and, and bring it back to the IBM event here. We were talking at the uh, um, opening night about the programs. What is the modern computer science program structure out there? There's a variety of different tracks. We don't need to go into great detail, but there seems to be a mindset right okay. now for this new generation. Okay. I'm an old, well, I'm old school. You know, we did assembler. We you know coded a lot of stuff. Now. Computer science is so much more exciting. I mean, there seems to be, you get the math angle, yeah, there's so much going on in computer science, it really is an exciting time. So the new kids coming out of college and okay. the universities, they have an awesome opportunity in front of them, startups, as transformations going on. What should be the curriculum? What is being taught? What are the highlights? What is the, the good and what, what is not so good? Okay, I think uh, this is also the topic of my, uh, the, the, pr the presentation that I had in the 2013 IOD and this is also the kind of decisions that we made in our school. So I was lucky to be at Istanbul State University, which is a startup university, and I was very hands-on in all the decisions that are made, which is a great, good opportunity for me. And we decided to use Python, basically. And this was a key decision, because I think my key uh, design criteria when I was designing the curriculum was this. Whatever I do, I shouldn't lose the student's uh, excitement or the curiosity. I mean, this, is the, this was the key design criteria. Make sure that you're, that you're not losing the student. He is or she is basically progressing with some programming language, which is going to make him uh, easy to kind of interact with the, the platform, with the data. So I think there, Python is the key. So therefore, we decided we're going to teach everything in Python. And this was very radical because all the old schools in Turkey and, and also in the US, they, they either teach, for example, in C or, or Java, which are sort of mature languages, but I think also coming from the, the education or from this, uh, let's say, from this channel, I know the difficulties because you get bored. It, it's, it, it, is, it is easy to kind of get bored or to get sort of, you know, with the challenges of the platform itself. So we have to... Well, and they teach it because it's popular. It right? is popular, it's, it's but... It's everywhere, but it, Python works for Google. Python works for Google, so I get a lot of you know, uh, feedback and also you know, back pressure saying, you know, everybody is using Java, why are we using Python? Wait, wait, we'll see, because I want people to stay active, agile, I want them to kind of you know, get into it. If they want to learn Java, they will learn Java. They will have that self-esteem already built with, with a bit Python, which is it's as easy as just open your terminal, type Python, and there you have Python. So this is, I think, what I see or what, should, uh, what I should see would like to see also in other programs, basically making sure that students are agile and they don't lose their creative creativity and curiosity. And I think we should help as the academicians, how, what is the right environment for that? And I think, as I said, Python is the key. Well, it's it. good to put them out of their comfort zone every now and then as well, and, it, and, they and keep I mean, innovating. They have to be kept out of the comfort zone anyway, so I, I, that, that is a must, so I, I give yeah, you okay. that. Yeah, okay, so, uh, but it, in, independent of the programming language, okay. what other requirements are there? Because you can learn a new language. I mm -hmm. mean, you're I relatively think, easy. I think we, we should teach them how to be social programmers. That's, that's the first thing. Social, social What does that social mean? Programmers. So there is a concept called pair programming in uh, software engineering, or agile software methodologies, which is called pair programming. Usually, you know, when you think about a programmer, you see someone who's lonely, right? Who's kind of coding by himself. He has a task to get finish. Get the hood on. <laughs> get the hood on, you know, have, a, have coffee and all that. But no, I think, we have to make sure that you know, we, we are basically raising social programmers. And one thing, you know, how do you be a social programmer? Well, there is a concept called paid programming. Paid programming, and what, what it is, is one of you is programming. We, we basically, we are in pairs. One of you is programming, and the other one is sitting right next to you, and reviewing the code, 
checking and also asking questions, verifying. Ah, very peer. collaborative. And very collaborative because peer you know, programming. Peer programming. Peer programming. Peer pro so it's called paid peer programming. programming. No, peer programming. Payer. Payer. Payer programming. Oh, payer, payer. 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 <laughs> well, social programming. Sorry, okay, pair no, programming. Maybe it's free programming because it's social. <laughs> so, you know. so the buddy system, team. It is a right, yeah, it small team. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Buddy system would be, you know, uh, I think it would be better, but anyway. Uh, no, no, so, like, it's good. Okay. So that is, as I said, I think we need to have social programmers. At the end of the day, as I said, for going back to data science, they have to sit around the table with statisticians, with practitioners, and do it right there. So, well, you should kind of give them already, you know, uh, right in school. So we should make them social programmers right from the back. All right, so what, you guys started this program when? Uh, we, I've been working on, my, my team, you know, my department is working on it, uh, I think one and a half year now, but I, we just started uh, last September. So it took, took some time to get the it curriculum? It took some time, and it, it and then this all just, just uh, last month? Last started. month, yes. Oh, okay, and how many students? How, we have 15 uh, so far, awesome. and uh, we are partnering with IBM actually also in this data science program. On the curriculum? So, or? In the, so they're going to pitch in with maybe uh, guests, as guest speakers, or they're going to, through the academic initiative program, uh, we're going to have uh, access to the products, like IBM's you know, uh, products. Excellent. And we can teach them. In well, the I want to ask you what's next. Uh, so you write papers that two years becomes mainstream, you're ahead of the curve. Okay. Um, what's next? I mean, what are you working on now that you think is going to be kind of coming into the mainstream that's going to be important? Okay, so I did my PhD on data stream management systems, and I, and I see now IoT ga gaining traction, which is Internet of Things. And everything that is being discussed in, uh, in the scope of IoT is I, I know it now by heart because yeah. I did my PhD. That's on what they call stream computing. Stream That's computing. So, the, uh, or data stream management. So, just computing, yes, and also how do you manage the whole platform? So. And I, I uh, so that's what I'm, I, I'm, I'm seeing. I mean, that's so. What do you think about the crowd chat idea we were talking about? The one weird because that's a stream. I mean, streaming is how people are talking now mm -hmm. online. So I want to get your take on how streaming can not just be for things, machines, people. People are streams. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're streaming ourselves, right? That's right. So where do you see that going? Because it's very unstructured. Um, you know, Twitter's earnings were out today talking about cohort analysis, essentially relationship mapping. That's all math. Okay. Right? If, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the, what you have shown me in the crowd chat, you were organizing uh, the streams around uh, hashtags. Yeah. So basically, you're helping the community to be organized. So in some way, that's how, that's your biggest, uh, I think, help. So I see crowd chat actually, you know, growing. That's awesome. fun And what about this idea of cognitive computing, essentially, Reasoning. I mean, because you, now you have context, which is like the in-stream stuff, relationship across any so database work, and then the streaming stuff gives you a real-time component. Mm -hmm. That's really compelling. Okay. I get that, right? So now let's go on top of it. Okay. Actions. How do I create more insights? The human component. A little bit of a cognitive. That's what they're calling it. But to me, it's more of okay. I got all this data. I got all the ingestion going on. I'm doing some analysis. Some algorithmic stuff going on. Automating, orchestrating. Now, what do I do with it? Okay. Security prevention. It could be people relationships, like CrowdChat, other things. What do, what where do you see that going? I mean, it's, I think it's still early for the cogn co cognitive computing. And so the, your your you know statement about Twitter and Facebook. So yes, we are uh, sensors. Yes, we are basically spitting out information. But just think of it this way, we are spitting out, if we are not too lousy in our usage on Twitter and Facebook, we are spitting out quality information, basically. What, you, you look at, a, for example, a sense of reading, you look at something else, and you basically say, you combine many information all together and you say, you spit out something in your Twitter message. And it is, now it is digital, it is textual, and we can mine it, the, the, the machines can mine it. So basically that is how uh, us people got in the, you know, the, the whole game. So, cognitive computing, I think, it is too early on. I see people trying to, you know, use, going back to neural networks and trying to, you know, revive it again. So, I, I think it's still in a it's very It's still a bit early, but it, you can connect the dots, so you can say, okay, if we do the in-stream processing, if we do have some algorithmic coolness around machine learning, yes. you can almost project, okay, the next evolution is some sort of personalized experience and or value. Okay. You can get there. Uh, or can you? One, 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 <laughs> Come one, on. one more statement about this is I think uh, we need to be careful though, yeah. John, because uh, there's a lot of data, yes, but is, does that data have also in it our big biases as well? Yes, it does. So in a way you need to be careful. 
it is us who spit out the data, but it is the system who drove, you know, who drove us to kind of, you know, gave the observations and uh, outcomes. But we need to be careful. So it could be the, it could be our biases that kind of gave uh, gave rise to those kind of observations. So even if we understand, ah, aha, uh -huh, you know. I, I discovered something, probably you have discovered a big bias there. And you can also, so game, it. You can also game it as well. There's gamification, if you know the biases are built in. Oh, oh, <laughs> you know, exactly, so that's, that's a great point. Uh, so this is so exciting, it really is an exciting right? field, it really Absolutely, is. Absolutely, yeah. You're doing some great work, really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. It really is, again, computer science is to me so exciting right now and, and so much opportunity. Um, really, you really can't bump into something that's not going to be a big opportunity within computer science, certainly around analytics and cloud. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this Thank short you. break, live in Las Vegas. For IBM Insight, we'll be right back.